Google has added support for JavaScript when they index pages, um, but more than likely, uh, full support will have, won't be for anything else than Angular, most likely. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, you get all the other nice features of uh, using of adding search engine optimization, uh, in that you can have a graceful degradation of your page. So, uh, search engine optimization really is about getting your page listed higher in the free parts of a search engine, and not in the paid part. Uh, so, in theory, it sort of is every uh, every search engine, but in practice, it's optimizing for Google because uh, 99% uh, of traffic comes via Google. So, uh, the other search engine just follow tags along anyways. Because if they don't don't support the same API, so the same methods, then they will have even less users. So it consists of two parts. Uh, you have your website uh, and your content, your, your HTML and architecture, and that's the thing that you can control directly. And then you have other pages and other contents, uh, pages that link into you, and uh, their status and their rank, uh, that also has an effect on where your page is uh, located. Uh, so one way of getting high, higher up is to pay some sites that are already high ranked to link to your page and that will keep bring your page higher up in the score. So uh, there's really no way to cheat your way to the top. Uh, you can't just publish uh, a site and then uh, append some keywords and expect it to be high ranked. Uh, you need high quality content and you need a lot of visitors and if you don't have that you're not going to be right ranked high. Uh, why would you? Um, so, but there are some rules. You need to have a meaningful title. That means that each and every page needs to have a title that uh, is uh, descriptive of the content that's, that the user is going to view on that uh, on that page. And that means that you can't have "Welcome to my page" at, on every single page, because then you're gonna uh, you're gonna fall pretty far down uh, instantly. Uh, and also you have to think about which keywords that your users are going to search for and you're going to have to embed them into your text. Not as keywords, but they have to be in, in the text that you, that you display to your users. Uh, and then you have to make sure that your site is quotable. I'll go, come, come back to what that means. And that's a key issue. Uh, yeah. So there are a few strategies that exist. I'm going to outline one strategy and that's using PhantomJS uh, and then after you've used PhantomJS you also need to do something on your server side. So PhantomJS is a headless browser which means you can bring up any web page and it'll render as uh, it will render in WebKit and you can take screenshots um, but you can also uh, manipulate the HTML that uh, your site is getting. So that means that we can run Phantom scripts on your Ember apps, render the full DOM that the user would see when they navigate through your pages, and use that uh, to uh, make your pages readable by Google or Googlebot. Uh, so the workflow that I'm usually using, I have a hosted version of my uh, web application. Uh, it's either in test or staging, sometimes in production even. And then um, I'm, I write a JavaScript application uh, that I run in uh, PhantomJS uh, to crawl that page. So we'll go through any links that are on that page and it will uh, record all the unique URLs and we'll make sure, make sure to visit them and uh, store that markup on disk. Uh, so what you end up, up with is a static version of your page. Uh, and once you have all your unique URLs you need to create a sitemap XML file uh, which looks I'll have one later. Uh, it's just an XML file that lists all the URLs that you're expecting Google to, uh, to crawl. So this is the intermediate result. Uh, so here I have, uh, it's gone through my, my page and it's created static HTML pages for every single route that, my, uh, that this application has. Uh, so every time that I add new content, so say I'm adding a new chapter to this Raspberry Pi uh, book, 
and then I'll rerun the uh, the Phantom script, uh, and I'll get sort of chapter seven in, and, uh, and then I have to uh, upload a new sitemap and tell Google about it. Then on the server side, whenever I load index.html on the server side, uh, I also need to fetch this static version, and I need to find the body of that of that uh, HTML file and inject it into a NoScript tag on the page. So that means that you're really serving two versions of your site. You're serving uh, your Ember app and you're serving the static version which is inside a NoScript. Now that NoScript uh, tag won't change when the user browse if it has uh, JavaScript enabled. But when Google visits your site uh, or the Google bot, it will just see what you're in, what you return. Uh, so it'll use that HTML to index. Uh, the other uh, the nice thing about this is that if you turn JavaScript off in your browser, your web page still work. I'll give a demo of that later. Yeah. So it looks like this. So it has all of the has the page as it is uh, usually, and then it has the NoScript tag, and then it has uh, the Ember app, uh, the static version of the Ember app. So you can see here it has class equal Ember view. Uh, and all of that uh, is in, contained within that NoScript tag. Uh, and then the sitemap XML needs to be uploaded and uh, browsable by Google, and you need to tell Google about it. So you need to log into their um, website administrator thingy, and you need to tell it, uh, my sitemap is at this URL, uh, and then they will index it in a few weeks. So it looks like this. This is a simple XML file, uh, and then uh, it has a location for all the different URLs uh, that you, you expect Google to index for you. So there's a source code here for uh, uh, the script that I'm using. It is a work in progress. It's sort of like a, a mini crawler or a website crawler. And it's very, very specific to exactly this use case, so don't expect it to be a general tool you can just bring in and it'll work. Uh, and then on the server side, uh, this is a link to what I do, uh, which is just I'm, I'm getting the HTML and I'm injecting it into an old script tag. Uh, and this is what in the admin panel, there's a little button that says Trivet static SEO version. Uh, and I can click that and then it'll do that for me. So I don't have to go into the console and actually write phantom.js crawler and then all the parameters. Yeah, and this is the Java code for it. So it just. Uh, so it creates a no script and then uh, it appends uh, whatever it read from, from the static version of the file. So I'll just show you a really, really quick demo of how this looks. So if I load up the uh, website here. So this is, uh, I'm doing uh, some courses for kids at home and I usually have electronics in it. So this is just. Um, a website where I document what we what we're going to do. So it's in Norwegian. It's not really important. So this is an Ember app. So when I browse it now, uh, everything is uh, sort of uh, Ember-ish. Um, but if I go into my settings uh, and then turn off my JavaScript, uh, most uh, Ember apps would just. Uh, so if I refresh this application now. This is my this is my production application. Uh, but if I refresh the application here twice in Chrome, um, then the application is still visible and is still formatted uh, as it was, uh, and is readable by Google and a human. And on top of that, it's also browsable. So things go more slow. I have to go. It's the old request and response cycle that we talked about this morning. Uh, but then. The thing is that the application still works, and that's uh, that's quite important. Uh, so, if you're clever about it, your page will work 100%. Uh, uh, if you're less clever about it, only some features will work, such as this drop down here it requires JavaScript, so it doesn't work. Uh, but here you can you can have uh, you can. It's probably a better way to implement that sort of stuff if you had time for it.
and I have to remember to turn the inner back on otherwise.